I would say the most important and unique part of the human brain and brain evolution is that we've created a pause between sensing and responding. And in that pause, which exists to more or less success, as we'll talk about, there's the ability to judge and to make decisions and then to have goals that you carry out. It's what allowed us humans to build the cultures and societies that we've created, to, to have language and art and music and all of the technology that surrounds us. All of this is potential because we've basically unshackled the chains that make most creatures slaves to their environment and don't allow them to break free in the way that we have. In addition to bottom-up is top-down, which is this ability that I said to have goals. We're in a constant sort of struggle, I mean a more positive way of thinking about it is an integration between bottom-up and top-down. We do it constantly. We're constantly dealing with the environment sort of imposing itself upon us and demanding it, us to do certain things and then us making decisions either for or against it. And so this is another ancient part of our brains that exists. We do not parallel process multiple top-down goals at the same time. We ha it's just not how our brains work. I think, you know, clearly we wish they would and we sometimes believe that we could make them. But for the most part, these attention directing networks, the top down networks engage and then they need to switch when you um, redirect your attention to something else. So when you start fragmenting your attention because you're switching those patches rapidly, what's happening there is that you are just losing fidelity of the information that was being retained. And what we always, you know, the term that we'll use in our papers is that you suffer a cost, a switch cost with each one of these. And that cost is often represented as a, a slow, slowing down of your abilities yep. um, or a loss of accuracy. So what, what we see when we do our research is that if you look at perceptual abilities, decision making, memory, uh, emotional regulation, all of these capacities are diminished in terms of the level that they could reach when they're fragmented. I'm talking about our education system and our medical system, our mental health system. Mm -hmm. These should be the institutions that were created to help us have healthier minds. They're not doing their jobs. So I actually put a lot more um, negative attention to those industries rather than the tech industry. I feel that our education system has largely focused still from its foundations in the Industrial Revolution uh, to transfer information content, maybe now in some more evolved schools skill uh, development, uh, but not really building the underlying information processing systems of the brain. Yeah. Cognition, attention. Yeah. Teachers don't even know if you ask them about their classrooms, who has the best working memory? Who has the best sustained attention? Who has the best emotional regulation? Yeah. Who has the best compassion? They don't know the answers to any of these questions. They know the reading and math performance. And that is, that is a tragedy in my mind. So a closed loop means that you could create a piece of software that records your performance, ideally your physiology, would know you in a deeper way than anything possibly could. Looking at your emotional responses, your facial expressions, your heart rate, your brain activity. Use that data to create a perfectly tailored experience to challenge you appropriately in just the perfect way and to reward you in such a manner that you're deeply engaged that plasticity changes your brain and improves your performance turning that game into what we now call digital medicine. So the idea is that we can use this closed loop experience to improve abilities of the mind to a level that we could not, not achieve um, with any molecule because we don't have the targeting or the personalization. I mean, full sensory stimulation, ideally olfactory, visual, auditory, tactile stimulation, um, where you have this very, very complex loop of all this data about you flowing into a software system that knows how to interpret that data, not trivial, and then feedback an environment that is constantly and dynamically adjusting to you to create this state that allows you to adjust all these complex aspects of your thinking. This is our AI vision, as I always say, AI for HI, 
artificial intelligence for human intelligence, that's where I think this type of, uh, these types of algorithms should go.